Are you friendly? Yeah, you just want a bit of loving, don't you? It could be a scold from boiling right. water. Horrible. Oh, a sausage. Right now, there are dogs that need help. We don't get many toy Yorkies stuck in TV cabinets now. And there are heroes who are dedicated to saving them. I don't want to leave any animal in there. Why would you allow those dogs to look like that? Transforming their lives. It sounds like she's in a lot of distress. The nurse in me wanted to make him better. She just can't believe how lucky she is. <laughs> Finding them forever homes. I feel like a lucky boy. She deserves it after what she's been through. He's my guardian angel, aren't you, mate? And giving our four-legged best friends a second chance makes it all worthwhile. Him giving them that little ray of hope. They are the dog rescuers. Without a shadow of a doubt, this is why I do this job. On today's show, we meet some wonderful dogs, like Cassie here, whose owners are struggling to give them the care they need. And more often than not, when that happens, a dog's welfare can suffer. But thanks to our devoted dog rescuers, Cassie and countless others are able to bounce back with their tails wagging. This is the wagging bit. Do the wagging. She only wags off camera, as do I. Coming up. Gussie. They're just going a bit stir crazy, aren't they, Anita? Two border collies need rescuing from an owner whose life has spiralled out of control. I don't think it's very fair on them, is it, really? Living like that. It's a shaggy dog story. It's a strange looking dog, isn't he? In, in a nice way. When Inspector Anthony Joins meets elderly Alfie. He looks like a cartoon character, doesn't he? And I'm with Kevin, a very special rescue dog who's helping his owner lead a fulfilling life. Thank you. In Staffordshire, Inspector Charlotte Melvin is on her way to check on two border collies called Cassie and Jess. Their owner is struggling to cope, and they're all living in unsuitable conditions. Charlotte has already issued him with a warning notice to get the house cleaned up. Just heading to see how they're both doing um, and also to see um, the property, to see if he's made any improvements with the tidiness and things like that. If the conditions are the same as last time, the only next step is going to be taking the dogs. It is hard when you go into a house like that because you do feel sorry for the animals, but at the same time, there's a person that's living there but it's something that if you're going to do this job, you've got to accept that you can't save everyone from every situation. Hey, you all right? Yeah, OK, you're well, Come round and see how you're getting on. Come in. Come on. Oi! Come here, you. Straight away, Charlotte can see the situation hasn't improved. There's rubbish and flies everywhere and mouldy dog poo in the kitchen. It's even worse in here than last time, isn't it? It's a mess in here, I know that. I don't think it's very fair on them, is it, really, living like that? You shouldn't be living in this either, should you? It's disgusting. It's a lot to do. The state of the dogs, lively longer-haired Cassie and older shorter-haired Jess, is also a concern. These have both lost weight, haven't they? Compared to last time I was here. What food has come out of Have they, though? There's food in there, aren't there? No, there's none in here and there's no water anywhere for them either. The owner and his dogs used to live on a farm and former working dogs like Cassie and Jess can find it hard to adapt to a home environment. Cassie. But they're just going a bit stir-crazy, aren't they, in here? How old's she? She is getting... She must be in her teens, well in her teens. In her teens? Yeah, well I think. in her teens. She's one of the best sheepdogs. Well, she was the best sheepdog I've ever had. That's what I mean. She's gone from a life of that, hasn't she? Being outside and doing mm. all that work and everything. Mm. And now they're just cooped up in here all day, aren't they? They're quite happy here. I don't think they are, though, are they? I don't think they're happy with each other, to be honest. 
Charlotte spotted that younger Cassie keeps bothering older Jess. She's constantly all the time on at her. And that could be another reason why she's lost weight, if she's getting a bit stressed with that. To be honest as well, I'd like to get a vet to look at her, because of how, how much weight she's lost. If you're telling me she's been eating... Yeah, she's eating. She's ..and eating, she's lost she's all that weight, months. then there's something not right with her, is there? She's getting old, isn't she? I love my dogs. I love my dogs to be dead. Well, that's the thing, though, but they can't live like this, can they? The owner doesn't want to give up his dogs, and Charlotte has no legal power to remove them on her own. The dogs can't live there. I mean, don't get me wrong, he does love them, but you can't sacrifice the dog's welfare for his happiness. You've got the younger one who's obviously full of energy, winding the bigger one up all the time, the older one. Um, she just looks fed up with it, to be honest. Charlotte has no option but to call the police. See if we can get somebody here to seize them. And what's the reason that you need police assistance? To get the dog seized. What's the reason for the seizure? Conditions mainly, and then one of them's quite thin as well. Back inside the house, Charlotte delivers the news. I don't like losing my dogs. You need to sort this out then, don't you? The owner's case will be considered, but for now, the police will be seizing the dogs. Oh. There's obviously some bigger issues here, isn't there? You probably need to get you some help with. There's obviously quite a bit of mess throughout the house. Downstairs is bad enough, but policeman Rob Peacock makes an alarming discovery upstairs. There's no furniture, just wall-to-wall -wall dog feces. It's clear the dogs haven't been going out and the owner is in desperate need of help. We've made some referrals to get some support for you from social services, but due to the smell, I've asked for environmental health to come and have a look to see what we can do, because it's quite bad. I would say that the majority of people that we work with are people that you do feel sorry for. A lot of the time, we might be the person that does actually flag up issues to the relevant support services that might have never been found if it wasn't for us going to see the animal that's living there. With the police agreeing to seize both dogs, Collie Jess and lively young Cassie can be removed from the property. Come on. Come on. She's here. You're not going to get in there, are you? Come on. Come on. Good girl, in you go. Good girl. Good girl, come on. Come on, in you go. What she doesn't. She don't feel very nice taking the dogs, to be honest. It's not like you've gone in and it's somebody who's been beating a dog or something like that. It's his lifestyle that's got out of hand. Uh, it's gone in a downward spiral, and then now that's impacting on the dogs. Cassie and Jess both look underweight and need to see a vet. Hopefully it's just lack of food causing their poor condition. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. Download Veely now. Inspector Charlotte Melvin has just rescued Border Collies Cassie and Jess. Hello. They've been cooped up in hazardous conditions. Come on in. Good girls. Come on in. Both dogs also seem on the thin side, so Charlotte has brought them to see vet Deborah Rag. Five-year-old Cassie is first up. Should we give it a go and see if we can put you on the table? Cassie is very nervous and stressed, which could make her behaviour unpredictable, so Deborah pops a muzzle on her. It's OK, you. It's all right. I know you're scared. I know you're scared. It's OK. It's OK. Do you want to come this side and take over where I am mm -hmm. so I can let go? Lending a hand is vet nurse Jane James. Young Cassie and older Jess have been cooped up indoors, and it seems Jess has been responding to Cassie's boisterous nature with a few nips. Got some little grazes and things. Probably where the other one's had a bit of a go if she's just not left her alone. It looks like a fresh bite wound. We, we will do antibiotics as a precaution because bite wounds inevitably do get infected. 
Yeah, that's not fresh today. That's a few days old, at least, by the looks of it. And it's not just bite wounds Cassie has to contend with. She's also very thin. So she's definitely got muscle wastage on her head. You can feel right down to that skull straight away. You can feel her pelvic bones a bit more prominently than would be comfortable. If she were a working dog chasing around the fields and being fed well, I wouldn't be overly surprised at this, but bear in mind this is a dog that's not chasing around the fields anymore. She could do with a bit more food, definitely. Cassie's wounds need cleaning, something Jane can get started on, whilst Deborah gives older girl Jess the once over. Thank you. I know you look very worried. Under all that fur, she has got some muscle wastage. You can feel all her ribs quite easily. It's not much muscle over the backbone. You can see the way the ribs are a bit more prominent than they ought to be from this angle. There's a definite dip between each rib. That's enough for her for now, certainly. Seeing Charlotte was right to rescue the dogs. If regular feeding doesn't help them gain weight, their poor condition will need further investigation. But for now, Cassie has other worries. With her fur clipped, the extent of the bite wounds are revealed. With her having a fur on top, we could only see this one little puncture wound here, and that was because it was freshly bleeding. From the look of that, it's a long time of keep going at her all the time. A lot worse than what I actually expected. It's all on the back of the neck, really, so that's the same as what we clipped up initially, and then this side's a deeper puncture wound there, and there's a couple of little puncture marks there. So we just need to give that a really good flush and clean. Oh, nice, sweet You're a very good girl, aren't you? Cassie will need to stay at the vets overnight. So while the nurses tend to her wounds, Charlotte gets ready to take Jess to kennels. For now, it's probably best the two collies spend some time apart. Good girl. I feel a little bit better about the situation after the vet's thoughts on the matter. It's made me probably realise that it is the right thing, what I've done. Um, and although I do feel really sorry for their owner, um, and I do feel sorry for the dogs as well, um, it is the right thing for them. We'll see what the future holds for both Cassie and Jess later. Rescue dogs are capable of some incredible things. We've seen them help people at a time of need, use their noses to further medical science, and fight crime. But their abilities don't end there, as Angelica Bell discovers. Dogs can make great companions, but some are more than just a best friend, playing a vital role in the everyday life of their owners. Now, today, I'm in Sheffield to meet a very special rescue dog that's doing exactly that. Wendy Martin has several conditions which affect her mobility, but for the past nine years, she's had assistance dogs to help her with daily tasks. Hi, Wendy. Hi, yes. Lovely to meet you. Her current dog is Kevin, who was given up by his previous owners when they could no longer care for him. Obviously, things aren't easy for you, Wendy, but just explain to me why you need his help. I've got disc degeneration in my neck and the bottom of my spine, which I've had for years. I suffer with stiff muscles, um, my joints hurt, bone pain. So if I'm struggling, the dog's there to help me. Yeah. So tell me a bit about Kevin. At home, he pulls doors, pushes doors. It helps me when I'm out as well. Quite often drop things, so he'll pick things up. I'd love to see Kevin at do work. Do some things, do some yes. Stuff. Would that be okay? Yes, that would be fine. Would that be all right? Let's go. Yes. Come on in. There's a good boy. Good boy. This way. For the past few weeks, Kevin's been living with Wendy, but because he's not a fully qualified assistance dog yet, he's still in training. Hello. Hello. Come on in. Kevin behind. And that happens at Support Dogs, a Sheffield-based charity that has trained hundreds of dogs to help people like Wendy. Well done. Georgina Sprackling has been working with Kevin. Okay. Good boy. Well done. He's been trained to Good boy. load and unload the washing machine for Wendy. Yeah. Um, it's a big part of him helping her out with her daily tasks. It saves Wendy bending over, yeah. pulling on Kevin, wet, tough those. things and things like that. Good boy. Right, Kevin, empty. So are there specific words that need to be taught? We try and just tend to use one word um, cues for them, because they can understand that much easier than a whole sentence. Thank you. Really nice and simple. Oh, well, well, <laughs> well, 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 That's a good boy. So good. <laughs> He's showing off done. today. Settle. Good boy. 
he just loves it. It's just a game, you know, everything's a game for them. That's the most important thing for us, that the dogs are happy, loving what they're doing, and as you can see by Kev, he does. Over 7,000 disabled people in the UK rely on assistance dogs to help with everyday tasks. Behind. Their four-legged friends give them valuable emotional support and independence. Kevin will take my coat off for me. Kevin, pull, pull. Good boy. Good boy. Kevin, pick up. Good boy, well done. How do you start the whole process off? Specifically teaching the sort of bringing things towards and picking things up. All the training we use is reward-based. It's all using treats and toys and motivation. Get the phone. Good boy. Thank you. So how did you know that Kevin was, was perfect for this role? The most important thing we're looking for is happy and confident dogs. Settling is a big one that takes some dogs a long time to learn. He's really To be good really at. calm when they're not working, just chill out. They know it's their time to switch off, so they need their downtime too. So being in a settle is a hard one for some dogs as well. Chill Kevin has definitely got that nailed. The charity also trains dogs for people with autism and to warn those with epilepsy of oncoming seizures, providing a life-changing service. Kevin's been working on mastering a vital task for Wendy, fetching help if she finds herself in trouble. She needs help. He should come and get somebody, get their attention and bring them back to her. So it's her. a really important skill, so... Yes, definitely. If he's trained to do that, she should be in safe hands. Yeah. Or should there be safe paws? Kevin, fetch help. Good. Good boy. So you give him a treat. So he gets a treat and I ask, where is she? And he brings me back to Good Wendy. Boy. So at the moment, um, we're starting to try and change it to Wendy's daughters so that they can practice in the home. But eventually it should be that he finds the nearest person. We can go out the room now, I reckon. He's ready for that. Kevin, fetch help. Yes, good boy. Nice one. Where is she? Good boy. Where is she? Good lad, that's super. Where is she? Good boy, well <laughs> done. Really Come here. Kevin, fetch help. Kevin even manages to find us despite the distractions of a busy office. Where is she? Good lad. <laughs> Good boy. Before you had support dogs, just explain how difficult things were. Well, I couldn't do much. When you're out on your own, you don't get noticed. When you've got a dog, there's a lot more people that come and say to you, do you need help? So That's in a way, it. beforehand, you, you, you felt invisible? Yeah. Yeah. Wendy, what difference has a support dog made to your life? A great difference. I know I've got the dog, and if I can't do it, then the dog will do it. Straight away, as soon as I wake up, his tail's wagging, looks at me, must to say, what are we going to do today? Like, you know, and it's, it's good. It's been a great day for Georgina's latest protégé. Rescue dog Kevin has certainly given Wendy the freedom to live a normal life. He was given up because a previous owner couldn't care for him, but now, Kevin and Wendy care for each other in a relationship that benefits them both, and it's wonderful to see. Now from bright young assistance dog Kevin to an old timer in need of help. And this is a shaggy dog story with a real sting in the tail. On Merseyside, Inspector Anthony Joins is on his way to investigate the case of a dog that's proven to be too big a challenge for its owners. Sounds like a dog that's just found itself in an unfortunate situation, really, and cut up, you know, quite a, a senior dog in years, about 11 years old, and initially it was the daughter's dog. I don't think she could keep it in her house, so then it went to the mum. Now the mum finds herself in a, in a circumstance where she's going to be moving house and she can't take the dog with her. It's just really sad, really, that you find a dog of that age in that position. Senior dogs, they love routine. They like security. So obviously to be passed from pillar to post is a really stressful time for them. What they don't want is disruption, really, unfortunately. And, but obviously sometimes disruption happens. This is life, isn't it? 
Hey, Joyce, you all right? I'd like to come in. Hello, hello, buddy. 11 year old Alfie, a German Shepherd cross, has a unique look. He's a strange looking dog, isn't he? But in a nice way, he looks like a cartoon character, doesn't he? And the mattedness of his fur. Have you been chopping at that, have you? Have you had a go? Yeah, look, I've yeah. got a go at yeah. it. I have a go at it, a lot. And being matted isn't this old boy's only problem. See, so I've noticed that boil on his tail. How long has that been there? It's been there for a bit, actually, yeah. to be honest. OK. Is he paying that? Boy, you quite a lot of attention, is he? He does, but he goes to lie down of a night. I can feel he's got quite bad mats on the bottom of his ears, hasn't he? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I've been do, trying to get them off. And he's got quite a lot of little lumps and bumps, hasn't he? Yeah. I didn't realise till today that he had that. They're not all necessarily something serious. That looks serious, that black one. The one on the tail. And then he's got another one next to it. Now. Yeah. Here. Yeah. 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 But they should always be checked over by a vet, really, because you just never know. It, it could be something quite simple that can be treated or removed, but if you leave it, you know, it could turn into something really quite nasty. Poor Alfie. He's been living with Joyce temporarily, but now, as she's about to downsize to a new flat, he's going to have to find another home. You're in a situation now where you're moving. I've got to move, yeah, because the house is too big. There's too many stairs. The crux of it is that you need to, you need to rehome him. You, you can't take him with you, can you? The best thing to do is sign the old fella over to the charity. Beautiful, isn't he, though? <laughs> I really like him. Yeah, he I is, really like him. He's, he's Due to Joyce's health issues, Alfie hasn't been walked for some time, so he seems keen to go. All right, bud. He said, oh, good, where are we going? It's OK. Let's go and see what the vet says. You're all right, Alf. He's massive, isn't he? Come on, Alf. Right. I think he's bigger than my kennel. I've put a big pillow in there for you, bud. Anthony's keen to get to the bottom of Alfie's health problems. In. in you go. Go on, Alf. Go on, lad. Well done. He has got numerous lumps and bumps. The one on his tail looks quite angry and aggressive, and that's why I'm taking him to the vets now. My priority is to make sure I get that looked at. Older dogs can be difficult to rehome, especially if they don't have a clean bill of health. So let's hope the growth on Alfie's tail isn't anything serious. Coming up. Shh, come on. Yeah. Go on. Yes. Cooped up come collies, Cassie and Jess both go it alone. That reassurance that she does and looks towards me for it is exactly what we want. She's doing really well. And stay tuned for your chance to rehome a rescue dog. Merseyside, Anthony Joins has just collected Alfie, an older dog that needs rehoming due to his owner's change in circumstances. Alfie has a large growth on his tail, which needs urgent medical attention. Whew. Alfie boy, let's get you out. That's not. <laughs> That's a very graceful, was it? Come on. On duty is vet Katie McCormack. Hello. Hi, are you oh, right? my goodness. Hello. Hello. He's a strange looking dog, isn't he? But the, the tail issue is what I've noticed that looks okay. a bit sinister to me, and we might have okay. to end up sort let's of doing something about Can it. Can I get you to stand up, Hanson? Ready? Oh, let's have a look. Oh, dear, Hanson. There's definitely some infection there, but I don't think it's just infection alone. I think there's some kind of muscle growth there that has just got infection on top. Yeah. I can feel a few other little lumps and bumps as well. He's got one here. Yeah. Another one there as well. The lumps might not be anything serious, but the growth on the tail is a cause for concern. Given the size of the dog, it could be a type of tumour, what's called a mast cell tumour. Yeah. Now, they're quite delicate tumours, if you like, so yeah. if you pop a needle in to get a few cells, like, take a sample of it, you can actually cause a bit of a, a breakdown, which can make the dog sick and can make the, it spread more as well. So I think right. because of where it is, luckily it's in a really handy spot yeah. because it's on the tail and you can get, you, basically you can take the tail off. Yeah. Amputating Alfie's tail will hopefully get rid of anything potentially cancerous, 
And while he's under, there's a couple of other issues that need addressing. You could definitely do with a bit of TLC with this coat. This coat is quite bad, isn't it? Got quite a few mats around the tail as well. Um, that's all mat there. There's his tail and there's his mat. Yeah. So I think we could do with a bit of a haircut. We've got a few teeth that could probably do with a bit of a clean here. They're not bad for his age at all, really. We see a lot worse. Basically, he's going to have a head-to-toe makeover. He'll be feeling a lot more comfortable, even when he just gets rid of all these mats. Yeah. Must be so itchy and... and yeah, yeah, definitely. So tomorrow, we're going to amputate the tail and then send it away to find out for definite what it is. And then we're probably going to investigate the other two lumps that I found as well, and then clean up his teeth and then clean up his coat as well. He's got a long day ahead of him tomorrow, and we just see how, see how it goes, really. And luckily, one of the brilliant vet nurses at the surgery has, um, has, has agreed to take him home tonight as well, which, which is brilliant for me, because it means that he's not, gonna, he's not just going to be put into a kennel tonight. Um, He's had quite a stressful day. Enter brilliant nurse. Come on, little elf. Oh, see you tomorrow, buddy. Come on, then. Thanks, Abby. Thanks very much. Here's hoping it all goes well for affable Alfie, and he'll soon be on the road to finding a new home. Keep those fingers crossed, Anthony. In Shropshire, Border Collies Jess and Cassie have been in kennels for nearly two months after being rescued from a hazardous and dirty house. Both dogs were finding the conditions in the house, combined with no exercise, stressful. Nervous five-year-old Cassie wasn't getting on with 14-year-old Jess at all. For now, kennel supervisor Neil Richardson has decided to give them some time apart. Hello, Jess. Hello. How are you doing? Hello. Hello, sweetie. What are you doing? Go for a walk? Yeah. Good girl. Nice. Jess is the more confident of the two dogs. Yeah, they came in together, but uh, unfortunately, we have got them kennel separately because uh, Jess can have a bit of a go at Cassie and have a bit of a snap when uh, Cassie gets a little bit too much. Both Cassie and Jess were underweight when they arrived, but are now in much better condition thanks to regular meals. Hello, sweetie. Hello. Okay. Come on, Jess. Okay. Yeah. Jess, come on in. Go. And retired working dog Jess is finding life a lot less stressful now she's getting out and about. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Jess. Come here. You can't just assume that if they come from the same home that they're going to get on famously together. <laughs> so. Jess certainly seems in good spirits without her little sister. But how is Cassie coping on her own? Happily, she's now recovered from her bite wounds. Working on her anxiety is animal care assistant Mark Tapley. Cassie's a very sweet girl, just lacks confidence on her own. Building up her confidence, she basically just make every interaction positive and calm as you can. It's interactions even as basic as just walking past when she's in the block, entering the kennel, spending time in the kennel with her. Today, she's not overly uncomfortable. It's a keen, positive interest. Cassie's growing confidence means she will now allow Mark to put her on a lead, and she's enjoying her walks. Good. Typical collie, really. Very alert and almost got that herding sort of line about when she's walking out and about, which I don't mind. She's not spinning. She's not really stressed. The tail's up, which is good. The ears are up and alert. They're not forced straight back over the head. She's not feeling overly anxious. And that reassurance that she does and looks towards me for it, it's exactly what we want. She's doing really well. For now, it looks like Cassie and Jess will be better off finding separate homes. I think Jess could quite happily be rehomed as she is. Uh, Cassie maybe is just a little bit more confidence building first. With Jess, you can just go in, pop the lead on, take her out for a walk. 
Cassie's slightly different kettle of fish. Uh, it took a little bit longer to get her confidence, even just to clip the lead on. And uh, she's not as confident out of, out and about as Jess is, but Jess has got a few more years on her, so. <laughs> Well, we have some great news. 14-year-old Jess is now living with a retired couple in Essex, the perfect forever home for an old girl looking for the quiet life. And Cassie's also found her perfect match in Denise Yousens. So how is Cassie settling in? She's doing really well with people, and um, she's getting more and more used to meeting new people, and um, she settles down really quickly with them now, just like she's done with you. She's struggling a little bit with other dogs, but we're going to get some help with that. And what was it about Cassie that, that you liked? Well, it was important for me to have a dog that was friendly with people because I run um, a dog-friendly cafe. And um, it was important for me to find a dog that likes exercise, as uh, I live in a beautiful bit of the world and I walk quite a lot as it is. So, um, and I enjoy running. So um, a dog that was energetic was the, was the perfect kind of dog. And she has such an amazing face and an amazing personality that I just thought she was irresistible. So you spend a lot of time together? We do. We walk miles every day through beautiful countryside and um, apparently she used to be a working sheepdog. So um, I think she's fascinated because we walk through fields of sheep and surrounded by farms and um, I think she sort of feels at home. She's obviously quite an intelligent um, dog, so I think we're going to have a lot of fun learning new things. Um, she likes to play, and I don't think she's had a lot of chance to play in her past life. So it's good to see her having fun. And it's, it's really nice when you can see her sort of lying down, knowing that she's no longer alert, that she feels she can relax. So it's a pleasure to see her sort of relax in your, in your company. So Cassie's been a good addition to the household. She has indeed. It feels like I've got a new best friend. Oh. Oh, she's all relaxed. I think she agrees. Back on Merseyside, it's makeover day for Shaggy Dog Alfie. Come on, Alfie. Hi. Right, let's take you through to the other room. Vet Becky McAlpine will be performing procedures on his teeth, coat and the nasty-looking mass on his tail. Hopefully, at the end, he will look yeah. ten years younger. You ready, Alfie? You can be brave, boy. To do that, they'll need to put this friendly fella under. Good boy. Well done. All finished. Well done. So we'll just wait for him to go to sleep for a few minutes now. Lie down if you want. Good boy. Lie down. Good boy. First, Becky needs to x-ray his chest. We don't know what the lump on his tail is. So to be on the safe side, we're going to check in case it is something cancerous that might have spread to the chest. We're going to make sure that there's no signs of any tumour there. And if there isn't, then we can carry on. Let's do it. Hopefully it's good news. I had a look through all the x-rays, just to be sure, and I'm quite happy that there's no signs of tumour in the chest, which is really, really good for Alfie. What a relief. Now Becky can check out his gnashes. I think only this tooth is going to have to come out. The rest look pretty good. This one's very discoloured and quite wobbly, so it's probably causing him a bit of pain. Right, I'm looking away. Reminds me I must do some flossing. There we go. Quite a big root on that tooth. Now we'll just clean up the rest of them. Give him a nice sparkly smile. Yeah. He's like nails on the blackboard. Stage two in Alfie's makeover is to sort his matted fur. OK. He's covered, he's got big mats behind his ears, on his feet, on his sides, around his bottom and his tail. So they'll be really uncomfortable. That's one mat just from his ear. It's a big job with a dog this shaggy, so it's all hands on deck. Just found a scab on his ear. It's probably from where he's been itching because he's got this massive mat behind his ear. He's very uncomfortable. So he's managed to injure himself a little bit there, but we'll give that a good clean up, get these mats off. You can see just how big the lump is now that all the hairs come off. He's got a second lump underneath here. Just there. Then we'll have to go a bit higher to amputate it. But it must be so sore, bless him. 
all these mats smell because it's all dirty and there's poo stuck in them around his back end. So he's quite stinky, unfortunately, but hopefully we'll be able to get him feeling much better. After two relatively minor procedures for Alfie, it's time to amputate his tail. This is the serious bit. Are we ready? One, two, three. So it's off to the operating theatre. He's actually got another one, two, three lumps on his tail. This is the worst one. This one, when you squeeze it, is discharged. It's infected and very nasty. So we want to take the tail off away from there to avoid risks of infection. I think the tail must have been so uncomfortable, I don't think he's going to miss it too much. The tail is wrapped to keep it sterile, and Becky's ready to make her first incision. We happy at your end? Yeah. If you don't like blood, avert your eyes. A dog's tail is an extension of its spine, so it contains small vertebrae. It's used to communicate, although a wagging tail doesn't always mean a dog is happy. They don't really rely on it too much for balancing things like cats do, although cats also cope very well without their tails. Um, and they just seem to adapt. They just sort of wiggle their little stumps that they're left with, but it doesn't seem to affect their quality of life in any way. Now what we're going to do is just cauterise the blood vessels because they're so tiny, they're too difficult to sort of tie off. Cauterising a wound involves using a heated instrument to seal the blood vessels. Then Becky closes the wound with dissolvable stitches. OK, all finished. Okay. Thank you. Right. So you can see now, just got a little stump. And hopefully, with a bit of TLC, a very happy dog again. It seems Becky's developed a soft spot for Alfie. Oh, bless him. She's agreed to foster him for a couple of weeks. Alfie's lumps will be sent to the lab to check for anything cancerous. Now the old boy needs time to recover. Get well soon, Alfie. We'll catch up with you and Becky shortly. And if you think you've got what it takes to give a pooch a good home, find out how you can become a dog rescuer. After an op to remove his tail, German Shepherd Cross Alfie was fostered by vet Becky McAlpine, who performed the procedure, and husband Dan. And what was supposed to be a short stay has become much longer. Alfie, you charmer. I've had Alfie for about two or three months now, and he's, he's settling in really, really well, although we've had him much longer than the two weeks we were told we were going to have him for. <laughs> two weeks turned into two months very rapidly. Uh, but we've decided to keep Alfie long term now because he's settled in so well into the family. And he's one of ours now, isn't he? So we couldn't send him anywhere else. That's fantastic news for lucky Alfie. Well, who could resist this lovely big softy? As well as a forever home, 11 year old Alfie has gained a little brother, 18 month old Boris. We've had Boris for a year and a half since he was a puppy. We got him when he was seven weeks old. Um, he's another one of Anthony's rescues that <laughs> ended up staying a long time. They get on really well. They're now little partners in crime, run around causing absolute havoc together. Defying his age, Alfie's taken to the fresh air and long walks like a big puppy. When we first met Alfie, we thought he might not have that long left. Now that he's sort of fully recovered from his ops and he's built up all his muscle in his legs and he's running and walking fine, I think we might have years, actually. But he's come such a long way, you wouldn't recognise him now. Since we've had him, he's put on 10 kilos, and we don't think that's in fat. We think it's just in lean muscle mass. He's now able to get up the stairs without a problem, get onto the sofa without a problem. <laughs> yeah. You can be quite cheeky. He ate a tray of canapes at a Christmas party, didn't he? He did. I love volivons. He's a great dog to have around, and, and we're really glad that we decided to keep him, aren't we? Yeah, absolutely. Seems his previous owner did the right thing giving him up, and Alfie owes some of his fresh start to his rescuer, Anthony Jones. <laughs> I can't resist coming to see how the big fella and Boris are doing. Hello, buddy. Oh, hello. 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 Hi, guys. Hi. How are you doing? You all right? Nice hello. to see you. How oh, good is it to see him bounding around the beach? Hello. He looks Hi. amazing. He looks absolutely he? amazing. You wouldn't think he was 11, would you? He's doing great. 
The ah! tail looks great, doesn't it? Yeah. All, sort of all his little fluffs up. growing back over its little stump. Just all the other sort of lumps and bumps and things. Have they've, they been quite easily manageable for now? Yeah, they've just... all come back as cysts and they've all been OK. They're not bothering him, so I'm just going to leave them be. I always get asked in, in work, what's the best part of the job? But this, for me, there's, no, there's nothing better than this to see two dogs now with loving owners and running around yeah. on the beach is just amazing. That's really amazing. Isn't it? He is really, really energetic, isn't he? Yeah. And his coat looks amazing as well. Yeah. How good do you look? Hey, buddy. Hey, how good do you look? <laughs> so, for everything. Thanks for taking, uh, thanks for thanks for taking him on. I know, I'll leave you alone now, I promise. <laughs> but I'm, honestly, I'm absolutely overjoyed to how, how, how well you've done with him, because yeah, I just think he's come on so me. well. It's made my day, it really has. This old fella really deserves his happy ending. You take See care. See you later. See you back. soon. See you soon. All right. All right. See you guys. Bye. As you've seen in the program, many rescue dogs don't have the best start in life, but that doesn't mean that they can't make incredible pets. The RSPCA care for thousands of them and there's often lots of work that needs to be done to get them ready for rehoming. And here's just one of the wonderful dogs they've been looking after. Good boy. This is Billy. He's a seven-year-old um, Australian Kelpie who has been looking for a home with us now for about nine months. Unfortunately, Billy has a degenerative eye condition, which means that he has little to no sight at all. Due to this, he found kennel life really stressful. So he's gone into a nice foster home where he could be a bit more relaxed. Billy Upsy, yes, good boy. Because of his blindness, he has been overlooked, and that is a real shame because he's got so much potential and he's such an active dog. He doesn't <laughs> let it stop him from doing anything. Good boy. Billy has managed to master loads of commands, so he is really clever and um, he really uses his brain. What he lacks in sight, he sort of makes up for by having to be intuitive and work his way around the world without his eyesight. Poor? <laughs> Good boy. Billy's looking for a home in a sort of semi-rural location with secondary school age children or above, and preferably without another dog at the moment. If Billy finally found his forever home, we would just be all so happy for him that he's finally got the home that he really deserves and that he's waited so patiently for. Rescuing a dog is a joint effort, often beginning with a concerned caller and an inspector dispatched to investigate. But that journey continues with the vets, volunteers, kennel staff, and even animal behaviorists, all focused on giving them a fresh start. In today's show, we'll meet the dedicated people who help care for dogs like Tyson here. Just when they need it the most. Tyson, the camera's there. Just there. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Coming up, two skinny, staffy crosses need Inspector Hershey Bowles' help. Why would you allow those dogs to look like that? Why would you just ignore that? Can this terrified terrier be tamed? Scary person. Well, animal behaviourist Sarah Whitehead is giving it her best shot. Just doing a little bit of swearing to see if I, if I would move away. Is Brandy here? Yes. Hello. And I'm going behind the scenes at Putney Animal Hospital. You get the big bars off and then we can gently take the other pins that are going into the bone. On a damp Friday in Birmingham, Inspector Hershey Bowl is feeling under the weather. <coughs> I've had a cough for... It's been a week, it just feels like forever, but it's keeping me awake at night and I don't do well when I've not slept. Makes Hershey very grouchy and grumpy. And to top it off, Hershey's having a busy day. She's about to move on to her next job when she's approached by a member of the public. I made a report about two dogs further on down. Oh, did you? Let me have a quick look, Dolly. The woman had previously put in a call to the RSPCA about a pair of skinny dogs she was concerned about nearby. Yeah, I've got that one, darling. I've got it on here. Luckily, it's on Hershey's list. 
You know the two dogs that you saw? They were, what type of dogs were they? Staffies? I seem to think there was like a Staffordshire bull okay. top, but there was that thing that could count all the spine bones, okay. all the ribs. So OK, well, I'll definitely go next. I'll be them the next all one. Right, all right, darling, I'll call you. Bye. Bye. The public are really the eyes and ears of the RSPCA. If people didn't pick up the phone and, and call us, we wouldn't know what's going on. Hello? Hello? Hello, sir, can you open the door? It's the RSPCA. I've had a call about your dogs. Do you want to get dressed? Brilliant, thank you. Morning. Have I got you out of bed? There are two young men in the property. Come here, come here, come here, come here. As well as the two lively but very skinny staffy crosses Hershey was told about. All right, let them have a wee and then we'll get them both in. Come on then. Come on, darling. Come in. If we just pop in there, because I'm just going to have a chat to you. We've had a call regarding the physical condition of these two. When was the last time they saw a vet? The owners tell Hershey they inherited the dogs after a family bereavement. They say they've been feeding them, but haven't taken them to see a vet. So both these two were basically living with your mother, and then you two had them when your mother passed away. And that happened, what, a year ago? OK, I'm sorry to hear that, boys. What I'm going to do is, I, because of the physical condition of them, I have to take them to a vet. They might have to do some bloods and see what the issues are. If the vet says that they're suffering or likely to suffer is what I suspect due to their weight, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a police officer out and the police officer will seize those dogs. The brothers agree to let Hershey take them to the vets, but even that's not straightforward. Do you have a lead? You don't have anything in the house? No leads could mean the dogs aren't being exercised either. Luckily, Hershey's got some with her. Black Staffy Cross Bentley is first out. It's all right. Followed by Brindle Staffy Cross Rocky, with the help of his owner. Come on, sweetheart. <clears throat> well, then, you go in there for me, good boy. Oh, darling. He's skin and bone, Rocky, you know. Regardless of whether this is a medical problem or whether this is underfeeding, uh, it's one of the two. Uh, and we don't expect an owner to know if their dog has a medical problem, but we do expect them to react to the symptoms of that, which is obviously losing weight. You know, all I want to do really is scream and shout at them both and say, are you crazy? You know, wh why would you allow those dogs to look like that? Why would you just ignore that? This kind of thing just uh, upsets me so much. I've got an appointment at a vet, so I'll take them over there now. And I'll have a really good scream later <laughs> and get it out of my system. All right, darling. Hersh is grateful to the lady who tipped her off. She's happened to just see them as they've come running out of the property and actually bothered to pick up the phone and make that call. It's her that saved these dogs, not me. Hershey Bowl has just rescued two emaciated staffy crosses. She's brought them to see vet Mark Barton. Hi, Mark. Hi, Hershey. Hi. Um, I've got two dogs. They're fairly active, but um, and they're a bit wriggly, so it might just be easier if you get one and I grab the other. They're really lovely. Hello, you two. Come on, darling. There we go, sweetheart. Come on, then. Thanks, Mark. All right, darling. This way, sweetie. Dogs of this size can weigh around 20 kilos. Right, to check out just how Sorry, underweight Rocky and Bentley are, it's time for them to step on the scales. Right, so I'll eat Bentley first. And he's 12.6, so he's significantly underweight, in my opinion. And poor Rocky weighs even less. Good boy weight. Like 12.2. At the moment, the cause of their weight loss is unknown. All right, darling, stay. Bentley, stay. To rule out any underlying medical conditions, Mark is taking blood samples. Well done. Shall we? 
Often they will come back with no abnormalities at all, which often gives us a good indication this is just a lack of food alone. With the blood tests out of the way, Mark wants to have a closer look at Rocky and Bentley. All right, Dennis. They just might not be so happy on the table. These look like dog fight wounds, so I suspect if they're only together, they've been scrapping. Probably over food. Possibly, yeah. Having a field and body condition, generally very skinny. Looking at a body condition score, in my opinion, of between one and two, um, we generally do a scale of, of up to nine. One being emaciated or very, very thin, and nine being very fat. Oh, you're a good boy, Bentley. These nails are, are too long. I don't walk them because I've not got a lead. Right, brilliant. <laughs> um, <laughs> It looks like Rocky wants his turn. Come on, oh, I know, I know. OK. So that's the top of his pelvis, OK, is, is actually palpably, so when I'm feeling it more pronounced than the other ones. Do you describe them as emaciated? Yes, they're classed as emaciated. Rocky and Bentley can now enjoy a snack, but will they have an appetite? Oh, look. Silly question. No, you don't go for his. That's probably what's making you fight. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, look at him. Oh, bless. We've fed them to see that they've eaten really very well. Assuming that the bloods are okay and there's no other clinical problem, these dogs should put on a significant amount of weight in a couple of weeks. They should look a, a huge amount better. Until Rocky and Bentley's case is resolved, they'll stay in kennels. Bentley, come on. Bentley, are you going to go in? Good boy. Right then. But before her, she takes them there, she wants to thank the person who made that initial call. I just wanted to let you know that I'm really, really grateful. Those dogs have only been rescued today because you put that call in. Had you not put that call in, you know, it wouldn't have happened. I am very grateful and well done. All right. Take care. Bye. Absolutely justified taking those dogs away today. And she's an absolute star for you. We'll find out later if it's just a lack of food that's caused Rocky and Bentley to be so thin. When our pets fall ill, our first port of call is usually to take them to the vet. And the RSPCA rely on the skills and expertise of these medical professionals just as much as we do. Some of their more serious cases end up at their animal hospitals, and Angelica Bell has been given exclusive access to the one at Putney. I've always wondered what it'd be like to be an RSPCA vet. Well, today, I'm going to find out. And I'm late. Putney Animal Hospital has two operating theatres and eight wards, as well as consultation rooms and laboratory facilities. They handle emergencies, cases that inspectors bring in, and appointments with the local community. Hi, Angelica. Do you want Hi. to come through? Yes. Nice to Please. see you. Nice to see you. Clinical director Jules Bancroft has taken me under her wing for the day. So we're just going, this is our dog ward. Once in scrubs, my first job is to check in on some of the current residents. Hi, Emma. Hi. Good girl. Roxy was brought in when her owner was no longer able to cope. So you listen to the heart first. So she's a big dog. It's a fairly slow heartbeat. Zeus came in severely underweight. Good boy. Hello. There you go. There you go. Yeah, you can feel him as really bony, isn't he? Maddox is recovering from eye surgery. Just looking a little bit gunky there. We do the wound first and then clean down. Good girl. Good girl. Yeah. Brilliant. Good girl. And finally, there's the unusual case of Bob, who was found tied to a lamppost. He's obviously had quite major surgery, yeah. so it seemed quite a strange situation. We'll never truly know why Bob was abandoned mid-treatment, and he still has the pins in from that operation on his fractured leg. So should we get you out and have a look at you, Bob? Good boy. Good boy. We're concerned that there is some infection around one of the pin sites. We need to assess how well Bob can walk and whether his injured leg is healing. Go for it. Come on. Go on, Bob. Good boy. This way. That's great. And then back up. Yeah, he's walking. He's putting a lot of weight on it. No, he's, he's walking well on that. It's a good sign that he can put weight on his leg. We'll see you later, Bob. 
and there's no shortage of other patients to get through. So how busy does it get on, you know, on an average day? We usually have two vets consulting all day and two vets operating all day, so they kept, they kept yeah. fully busy, yeah. The hospital subsidises treatment for eligible patients whose owners have lower incomes. Is Brandy here? Yes. Hello. Brandy's owners, Dawn and David, have booked her in after finding suspicious growths on her body. So what can we do for Brandy today? She's got a few lumps on her. I think they're like fatty tissue. She's had them for near enough a year. Yeah. And have they got a bit bigger or just changed at all? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and there's another one here. So that's a new one, is it? Yeah. It's a bit deeper, this one. But what we'll do, we'll put a little needle in and get a sample out. It's very easy to see if they are just fat. If we're worried about anything else, we can send the sample off. Was it worrying you? Yeah, because obviously another one grew. I was like, oh, yeah. I don't want to... Because she's that bit older, obviously, you hear I'm getting cancer, and so I was just getting a bit worried. Just hold her leg for me. Good girl. Lily, aren't you? What a brave dog. Thankfully, Jules has some good news. Yeah, so that's what's come out of that lump. And you can see it, it's just fat. Yeah. So you can see that. That's yeah. very clearly there's 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 nothing that, that's just oh. that's just fat. Okay. She's a fairly elderly <laughs> lady and you know I I don't think that putting her through uh, an operation to remove them you know, it's not causing any problem for her. Um I think with any lump I'd always say monitor it. If it's growing, if it's changing, yeah. if it's starting to bother her, then um then pop her back for a check. Is it a relief to hear? Phew, yeah, cancer. definitely, yeah. Yeah. That was in the back of my mind. Thank you very much. Thank you for your help. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 She's got the all clear. She's all healthy. <laughs> Brandy can now rest easy. But there's no rest for me. One thing I've noticed is how much everyone is just working continuously and don't really have time to have a break. I've been on my feet all morning, so I'm a little bit tired, but we've got to soldier on because there's afternoon to be had. Hello. No worries. That looks full on. Rather her than me. We'll be back with Angelica later. Now, there are many factors that can have an impact on how long a dog spends in kennels. Tyson, for instance, is a staffy, a breed that sadly is often overlooked by potential owners. But other things like ongoing medical treatment or even a dog's behaviour can stand between them and a new home. At Millbrook Animal Centre in Surrey, Chat Russell Radley was one of 37 dogs signed over to the RSPCA after a council eviction. With so many dogs living in a one-bed flat, Radley was never socialised, making him extremely nervous and fearful of humans. And his level of anxiety means that he's currently unable to be rehomed, or even touched. Radley was extremely nervous and stressed. So when he initially came in, we weren't able to handle him. You know, at the moment, if a family took him home, his behaviour would be very difficult. Dogs are very scared and they feel like they haven't got any other option. They can become aggressive. It's not because they're nasty, it's just purely through fear. If Radley is ever to find a new home, he needs to learn to manage his fear. Hoping to help is Sarah Whitehead, a certified clinical animal behaviourist who works with Millbrook on some of their more difficult cases. Oh. Good girl. Sarah practices positive reinforcement, which uses rewards to teach good behaviour. It's one of the most effective and least stressful methods used by trainers, so it's ideal for nervous boys like Radley. Very first time I meet a dog, particularly one that's fearful, all I'm really interested in is saying to that dog, I understand a little bit about you. I understand that you need some space and some time, and I'm prepared to give you that. Sarah's first session will focus on gaining Radley's trust, but to do that, she needs to make herself as unthreatening as possible. So I always make sure that I'm, I don't put pressure on the dog at this stage. The less eye contact that I give him, the better. The second thing I do is I keep my body language lowered. 
kind of scary. Scary person. When, when dogs bark, basically they're just saying, I want you to put dis more distance between yourself and, and myself. And that, that's all that's happening there. He was just doing a little bit of swearing to see if I, if I would move away. He might be swearing now, but Sarah thinks the way to Radley's heart is through his stomach, and she has the perfect treat. So I'm feeding this guy um, bits of cooked chicken. Uh, there aren't many dogs that can't be bribed with cooked chicken, I've discovered. Prefer a Battenberg myself. Sarah's tactics seem to be working. So that's the first time he's taken food out of my hand. So that's a real step forwards, actually. So that's a dog that says, I'm prepared to make direct physical contact with you as a human being. This is fantastic progress for a dog who doesn't like to be touched. What sauce has she got on that chicken? I'm a great believer in getting training in as soon as I can, because what I'd like him to learn is that if he puts his chin on my hand, then good things happen. Good lad. Can do that again? This time I want his chin to come down to my hand. Good. Very nice. Lovely. He actually gave me the weight of his chin on my hand then, so I gave him a jackpot reward, which was more than one treat all at once. And I would say I'm going to stop the session for today. I'm really pleased. That's us. We're out of here. Well done, Radley. We'll be back with him later when Sarah steps up his training. Also coming up... Come on, then, girl. Inspector Carl Larson rescues a Labrador cross from a dark and dingy flat. This dog should have seen a vet before now. And Angelica's back with abandoned Bob. As vet Jules is faced with a difficult decision. It's possible we're going to have to amputate the leg. In the seaside town of Blackpool, Inspector Carl Larson is enjoying some typical British weather as he responds to a call about a dog infested with fleas. Fleas can become a major problem for a dog. It does cause them to, to scratch and cause bleeding to themselves, which can be quite frustrating because it is quite an easily manageable problem. Oh, hello there, it's Inspector Larson from the RSPCA. Available to have a quick word with me. Inspectors never know what they're going to walk into. Luckily, Carl has come prepared. I was going to use my torch, just but the light's not that great in here, just to see what we've got. Hello. Even by a torch line, Carl can see there's a problem. What's the dog called? Angel. With her, we've got quite a lot of bald skin on her. See, on the chest there and underneath, she's, is, is she scratching quite a lot? Chewing as well. The owner accepts Angel's poor skin condition but says he can't afford to get her treated. She needs to go to, to see a vet. Now, I can take her to get treatment, but long-term, if she's going to have a flea problem, it's going to return. You say it yourself, you're not able actually to take her to the vet. However, the vet says that, yes, they do believe that the dog is suffering. At that point, I have to get the dog seized. Eventually, the owner agrees to let Carl take Angel to the vet. But once outside the dark flat, Carl can see the full extent of Angel's hair loss. Come on, then, go. It's actually a little bit worse than I thought, to be honest. I could see there was some fur loss, particularly on the, the chest around the front there. She's actually chewed her tail to the point where it looks like it's been bleeding a little bit. So this dog should have seen a vet before now. Right. Oh, there we go. To get Angel the help she needs, Carl heads straight to vet Carlos Pascal. Hello! Hello, you beautiful. This is Angel. She's a um, sort of two and a half year old okay. lab cross. Let's get you weight. Hey, come on. Good girl. Sit, sit. You're beautiful. Oh, you're so cute. How cute is that? You're about 21 kilos. You're so beautiful, you are. <laughs> she may not look her best, but Angel certainly knows how to turn on the charm. We're just going to have a look at the skin to see if there is any evidence of 
parasites like fleas. We can see some crawling there, just towards my thumb. You can see that one there, and there is another one here. Um, unfortunately, this lady is covering fleas. That area there, that red patch is infected. And with the fleas that we can see, the, the quantity and the distribution of the lesions, you will think it's more like a, like a flea allergy dermatitis. She's reacting to the saliva of the flea. At the moment, it's quite obvious what, what our problem is. We need to get rid of those fleas. She's suffering uh, because it's, it's very itchy. This is a very uncomfortable condition. <coughs> She's been like this for a while, you know. This has been happening for several weeks, you know. And all this could have been so easily avoided if Angel had been to see a vet sooner. To treat, you don't need much more than a, a decent flea product, you know, for it. It's not very difficult. Sometimes you can even buy some of them over the counter as well. So it's just it's something that can be very easily prevented, you know. Angel's given the flea treatment she needs, as well as antibiotics and steroids to treat the infection brought on by her scratching. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take care. Cheers. See you. Angel will receive her treatment at Kennels. We'll catch up with her later. To find out more about keeping fleas at bay, animal care assistant Laura Maddox is on hand to give me some helpful advice. So this is our friend Tyson, and what are we going to do with him today? Um, so we're going to put on his flea treatment. Um, Which is why you've given me this magic is. bottle of goo. OK. Is that something that you do often with dogs? We do recommend that they have it monthly. You can have it monthly, so you never get fleas in the first place. Is he all right with having a flea treatment? Or is he... Cos he's incredibly strong, and I'm afraid he might suddenly leap forward and take us with him. No, yeah, he's a really good boy. What you might do is, because he can't see what you're doing, is he might quickly have a look round just to see what's going on. OK. Puncture my seal. Right, Tyson, here it comes. And then do you rub it in or you just leave it? No, you just leave it. Shouldn't and... touch it. No, don't touch it. Don't bath them for three days. Oh, Tyson, you're out of baths <laughs> for three days. You can go and roll in anything. And if you haven't given your dog a flea treatment, what are the telltale signs if it's starting to get fleas? What, what, would, what, um, would, what, what would give it away? So you, you can actually see fleas. Fleas, obviously, that's the main sign of fleas. <laughs> yeah. um, they have um, flea dirt, which is like a brown... Flea poo. It's flea poo. Flea poo. And it's brown. On your dog. <laughs> and um, they can <laughs> suffer from um, hair loss. And a lot of dogs are actually allergic to flea bites, and that's why they get these oh. sort of alopecia, itchy, redness. Um, it, it, can, it can be quite sore. And did Tyson used to have a flea problem? Yep, yeah, Tyson has got a flea allergy, so we oh, need to make sure that he definitely gets his flea treatment every month. Yeah, that's you done. You're ready to go. Tyson's available for rehoming and he doesn't have any fleas. Neither do I, but he can't have me. All right, Tyson, we can get you off the table now. Don't jump, don't jump. <laughs> we will supervise it. <laughs> now it's time to check back in with Angelica. I'm at Putney Animal Hospital, experiencing what a typical day is like for the RSPCA's hard-working veterinary staff. Earlier, we met Bob, who was found abandoned after major surgery to repair a fractured leg. This is the pin we were worried about. Clinical director Jules Bancroft wants to remove the metal pins holding his leg in place, but she needs to check it's properly healed. But before she can do that, Bob is anaesthetized and x-rayed to make sure there aren't any underlying complications. The x-rays from today will be compared to ones Jules took a month ago. Now it's really the D-Day. We'll, we'll put them on the viewer and we'll compare them with the x-rays from a month ago and see whether the fracture has, has completely healed. If there's any problems, any areas of infection in the bone, it's possible we're going to have to amputate the leg. So let's have a look. Jules doesn't want to have to amputate unless it's absolutely necessary. The fracture was across here. So we were concerned before that there was still a bit of a fracture line there. Is it gone? You can. It's much the same. I have to say, it's much the same. The fracture hasn't quite healed as Jules had hoped, and she can see signs of infection. 
The question is, we've got to weigh up sort of whether we risk taking it off or whether we leave it on longer and, and give him more time. Jules decides the threat of infection is too great a risk and the pins need to come out. I think we need to give him a chance, but I think we'll probably start removing the X-Fix and sort of see how things feel. So this is the pin that we think is, is causing quite a bit of problem. There's quite a lot of discharge, so we need to take it off. It's a bit fiddly here, isn't it? So ideally, what we do is we get the big bars off and then we can gently take the other pins that are going into the bone. We can then just take those off. So the problem is, because they're going into live tissue, they're not meant to be kept on for too long. So you can see all the yeah. <laughs> gunk. Discharge. discharge. You used the right word. <laughs> you used gunk. gunk. <laughs> <I> used discharge. <laughs> I'm turning into a real vet. This pin that's just come out. is just going to pull out. So that's because it's too loose. Um, quite possibly take an infection into the bone. Until you take it out, it's just going to get worse. Thankfully, there's no sign of infection in the final pin. So you've got, again, this one, it's nice and tight, tight in the yeah. bone. OK. So we'll have a feel of the leg. That's where we've got a bit of bony reaction from that infection. Oh, you can there. really feel it, yeah. yeah. So it's all looking quite positive, isn't it? Fingers crossed. All will be well. It's down to him now. Bob can now go into recovery, and it shouldn't be long before he's back on all four feet. And I can't wait to get off mine. It's been an exhausting day. Thank you for having me. Learned so much, and it was just lovely to be around all the animals, but I don't know how you do this every single day. It's really rewarding. It is tiring, mm -hmm. but, you know, you get used to it, and you just have to spend more time here. I know. Get a proper job. <laughs> Thank you for your help. No worries, and keep me informed. Absolutely. Yeah. We Brilliant. will. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, today has literally been non-stop for Jules and her team. They do an incredible job. And it seems like every day they're giving dogs like Bob a second chance. And fingers crossed he gets a new home really soon. Speaking of homes, I need to get to mine and collapse. Earlier, we met Radley whose extreme nervousness and lack of socialisation means that he's very fearful of human contact. Oh, scary. Animal behaviourist Sarah Whitehead has been trying to gain his trust, and her tasty treats meant Radley was soon eating out of the palm of her hand. A week later, Sarah wants to step up Radley's training. In their last session, he made good progress, but dogs like Radley can be unpredictable. So it, it's very possible today that Radley won't want to play ball with me, quite literally. He won't want to take a treat from me. He might not want to interact with me at all. It's very typical in dogs that are very stressed in rescue centres. Part of Sarah's plan for today involves getting Radley out of his kennel. But his first challenge will be wearing a harness, something he's probably never done before. Hello, baby. Hello, baby. It's very good. Good boy. Good boy. Come on, then. Let's be so brave. Good boy. Oh, good boy. That's good. Wait, and the first part. Woohoo! First part complete. So far, so good. This is always the scary part. Why don't we get this part over, the, over his head? There we go. Clever boy. Really good boy. Getting the harness on was much easier than Sarah expected. But once outside, it becomes clear that Radley isn't exactly happy about it. So this definitely feels like the first time he's had a lead on, or certainly been with a human being that he doesn't know, taking him out. And he's looking the whole time for an escape route. He says, if I let go of the lead, he'd be off. This is all terribly scary for him. So, um, you know, he's, he's just all about escape at the moment. All right, all right. Oh, yeah. oh now, all right, baby. All steady. Right. Good boy. Sarah wants to reduce Radley's stress levels, so takes him to a more homely setting. A pub. Good boy. Not a pub. Good 
good boy. Very good. Boy. Sarah's going to use a device called a clicker to help teach Radley the art Very of communication. Great. Hey, nice one. So I love to use the clicker with uh, with dogs like Radley because it bridges the gap between me and him in terms of communication. And rather than me using words, which he might or might not have heard before, it tells him that's what got it right. It's very quick at capturing the exact split second where the dog got something correct. Any time that he even glances at me, that's all I'm going to be looking for. Very good boy. Clickers can be used when training any dog, and they'll soon learn to associate the sound of a click with a reward. Nice, very good. So I'm getting slightly longer duration. He's looking at me for, well, more than just the split second that he was. Dogs use eye contact in much the same way as us, so it's important for Radley to learn this vital communication skill. Very good. And in a second, what I want to see if I can do is just put his name into this mix so that when I say his name, he actually does recognise that it's something to do with him. Radley. This, of course, is how dogs learn what their name is. They learn that uh, when they hear that certain word, that humans respond in a certain way. Radley. He's already cottoning on to the fact that the sound of his name, Radley, very good, means give me eye contact, means look at me. Radley's doing really well, but Sarah doesn't want to push him too far. We've started some essential training, but I can see he's saying to me he's tired, he's probably had just enough for today. It's a small step on a long road for Radley, but Sarah is confident he can learn to Ooh. conquer his fears. Good boy. Yeah, good boy. So the more I see of Radley, the more I see the bright dog that's in there, and I think we're going to see him blossom into a dog that not just tolerates people, but actually enjoys their company. And if we can get a bit of training in as well, make him eminently homeable. We'll be back with Radley later in the series to see if he manages to combat his fears and be ready for rehoming. Right, Still to come, right. we'll be finding out how skinny, Staffies, Rocky and Bentley are getting on. And if you need a furry friend in your life, we might just have the one for you. Come on, then, girl. Earlier, we met Black Labrador Cross Angel, whose fleas, fur loss and uncomfortable skin condition... That area there, that red patch is infected. ..didn't stop her turning on the charm. Oh, you're so cute! How cute is that? Angel's owner accepted an adult written caution and she was signed over to the charity. <whistles> Five months on, and flea free Angel. Oh, 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 oh. Get it. Has the staff at Blackpool Longview Animal Centre under her spell. She's a good girly. Especially animal care assistant Katie Eva. We all love her. Um, she's one of our, well, she's one of my favourites. Um, we shouldn't have favourites, but y you can't help it. It, it. it does happen. She's got the best temperament I think I've probably come across. Just loads of love to give. Loves playing with people, loves people's attention and definitely likes it when you play ball with her. <laughs> when she came in, her skin was, was a mess, but with special baths. I like bath time, don't you? This is not a bath, this is a shower. And special tablets. We have managed to get the skin looking pretty much as good as it's going to get, I think. She is still a little bit thin in places, a little bit of thin hair there. Um, skin's a little bit flaky, but that special shampoo, that's, that's working wonders for her. She's cracking. She's lovely. Really friendly. Kate is hoping it won't be long before Angel finds the forever home she deserves. Good girl. Angel's doing absolutely fantastic, and hopefully we're going to get a queue of people that come for her. Um, I think we will, because she is she's a cracking little dog. She's great. Come on. Earlier, two skinny, staffy crosses, Rocky and Bentley, were rescued by Hershey Bowl after a call from a concerned member of the public. Rocky and Bentley's test results show that their poor body condition was simply down to lack of food. Their owners said they were unable to cope and, while remorseful, admitted they hadn't done enough. Due to mitigating personal circumstances, both were given adult written cautions. The good news is, both Rocky and Bentley have found new homes. We're catching up with Bentley in his... Bentley! 
and as you can see, his transformation is incredible. This sprightly four-year-old is now living with Nikki Wilson, her partner Colin and son Aidan. Settled in very quickly within a few days. He was, he was fine. I liked him straight away and um, I wanted to bring him home. Aidan and Bentley's relationship's been really positive from right from the word go. Um, they've settled in like they've always known each other. Bentley has put on almost eight kilos and gone up several dress sizes. He's a healthy weight of 20 kilograms, which is exactly, I think, that the vets described him as a, a comfortable size 12. This is very modern. I thought he was a boy. His healthy weight has been achieved by a healthy appetite. He certainly enjoys his food, never leaves anything in his bowl, and regularly goes back to make sure it's empty. No, I'll go back to see if there's any more being put in. When Bentley was rescued, he wasn't getting much exercise, but his new best friend keeps him on his toes. I'm pretty fast like Bentley, and <laughs> I like running with him, and I like um, playing fetch with him. Oh, and after a bit of fetch, there are plenty of comfy spots for Bentley to chill out. Size on my bed because he he likes me and he likes um, doing stuff with me and he likes playing. <laughs> good boy, good boy. That's why I I feel like a lucky boy. And Bentley is very lucky to have you too, Aiden. Things are also looking up for Bob over in Putney. It's only been a week since his operation and you'd hardly know he was ever at risk of losing his leg. OK. Wait, wait. Looks like he likes taking vet surgeon Ellie Cavale for walks. Good boy. We are really happy with how Bob has done. He's been through a lot. He's been so friendly with all the staff. So happy, you know, even when there was a little bit of an infection and we were a bit worried about his leg, he was just happy to see us wagging his tail. He's just a happy dog, basically, and he's going to make someone a really lovely pet. Come on, Bob, let's go. Walkies. Good boy. As you've seen in the programme, many rescue dogs don't have the best start in life, but that doesn't mean that they can't make incredible pets. The RSPCA care for thousands of them, and there's often lots of work that needs to be done to get them ready for rehoming. And here's just one of the wonderful dogs they've been looking after. This is Red. She's a three-year-old Staffordshire Bull Terrier cross. She's been with us for about six months now. Red came in with her boyfriend after they were mistreated. She came in heavily pregnant. She had to have a C-section, unfortunately. But she did have seven healthy puppies, all of which have grown up, found their own homes, and now she's looking for her own home. Good girl. The perfect home for Red would be an adult home, preferably no other animals in the house. Someone who's got a lot of time and patience to spend with her, put in training and socialisation. Good girl, sit. Someone who can give her lots of cuddles and love. Red loves to tear around in the compounds, playing with balls and chasing every toy that you throw for her. She loves a good swim in the swimming pool on a hot day. And most importantly, she loves a good cuddle and a kiss. Red hasn't had the best start in life, so she is looking for her forever home. And it would be nice to find the right person just for her, because she'd make perfect family dog. Today we have a very special show for you. Four years ago, Inspector Anthony Joins took his dog rescuing skills to Malawi in Africa. And it was such a special trip for him that ever since he's been fundraising for the animal welfare charity that he worked with there. So when the chance came up to return to Malawi, he couldn't resist. And this time he has backup in the shape of vet Riaz Ramu. I wasn't invited, but I like Kent, so... Coming up. Can you put that camera down? Yeah. Hide that out of the way, yeah. Right. See the puppies? Can I see? Inspector Anthony Joins gets involved with a police sting on roadside puppy sellers. How much? It's in Bagabang. 
This is definitely different. It's a baptism of fire for vet Riaz Remu as he experiences operating in the field for the first time. The dog that we've just operated on literally got up from the anaesthetic and it's just bolted. Stone. So basically the dog was stoned. People throwing stones at it. And a case of cruelty tests Anthony. Honestly, it's not much that breaks me, but I've just seen that dog. Um, that's a low point for me, though. After a 10-hour flight, Inspector Anthony Joins and Manchester-based RSPCA vet Riaz Remu have had plenty of time to get acquainted. They touch down in Lilongwe, the capital of Malawi, a small country in the southeastern corner of Africa. Meeting them is Tino Rizemba, vet manager at the Lilongwe Society for the Protection and Care of Animals, LSPCA for short. Hello, Tino. How are you doing? Very well, thanks. Riaz. Nice to Nice to meet you, mate. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Really good to meet you. Welcome to Norway, guys. Thank you very much. Let's go. Let's crack on. These two aren't here to catch some rays by the pool. No, no. They'll be using the skills they've honed at home to help Tino and his team. Last time you came, I heard you uh, had a pretty eventful start. Yeah, I think by about this time, four years ago, I was. Yeah. I was stood in a 12-foot drain getting the dog out. This is an introduction to Malawi, isn't it? If you climb out and help me out... OK. Straight into the cage. Straight into the cage. It was a real full-on week, and it yeah. started yeah. right from the get-go. Yeah. Didn't even get to go to the hotel and get changed. We just were straight into it. For the first time at Riaz, everything's new. I know, obviously, there's going to be some differences with regards to, like, how many facilities we have, but I think I'm in for a shock, to be fair. Yeah. I can't wait to get going now. I don't yeah. know about you. I'm yeah, just yeah. excited. I mean, I think we could... I'm done with travelling now. I <laughs> think let's start. Yeah. Let's start. Careful what you wish for, lads. Less than an hour after landing, eagle-eyed Anthony spots something. Talk about deja vu. I think, I think that was an injured dog, then. I think, can we spin round at some point as soon as we can? Even from a distance, we can see that he's, the dog looks poorly. There's something going on there. Well, you've got to do something. We can't leave. A dog naturally wouldn't be lying like that. Has it been hit by something? And it simply can't move. Um, we have to wait till the part where there's no double traffic. One of us has to go across the road so she can't. Yeah. Hopefully, if she runs, she runs that way yeah. and not this way. That's the biggest concern. With the rescue so close to a busy road, it needs to be handled carefully. Ready? Go. Anthony, just wait till there's no traffic. I'm just going to see what it's like first before I try yeah. and grab it. I don't want to get bitten. Hello? 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 Ah, uh, uh, wait. That way. That way. Get the neck. Yeah, good job, good job. And she's not using her back left leg at all. She's hopping on it. She might have fractured that leg. Easy now. This isn't how Antony normally handles dogs, but because rabies is common in Malawi, the net and gloves offer vital protection. Right, twist, it. twist. Watch it, she might come out the back end there. All right, girl, I'm sorry. Try and scruff her. Good job, good job. Watch your hands there, Tino, I've got it. Okay. Oh, she's skinny as anything, mate. She's got nothing to her. Careful, careful, careful. There we go. All right. Close door. Good job. Got her. Um, do you want to come out this way? Yeah, yeah, what, left, come left. All right, let's cross. <sighs> You get a lighter box. <laughs> <laughs> it's not light, is it? Not too light. <laughs> she doesn't weigh much at all. No, no. I'll find out later that she's a boy. Thanks, man. Good job, Tina. 
Good job, mate. First one done. Nice With the stray dog safely in the crate, he'll be taken to the charity's clinic. Hopefully, Anthony and Riaz have got to him in time. In Malawi, it's the morning after the rescue before for Inspector Anthony Joins and Vet Riaz Ramu. Both are here to volunteer their skills to the local animal welfare organisation, LSPCA, the RSPCA's smaller sister. How do you sleep, buddy? <laughs> like a baby. <laughs> I feel tired now, Dad. I think we needed that, to be fair. Yeah, it was well needed. But... What did you make of those birds at five in the morning? I, I don't think we should talk about them. <laughs> First on today's agenda is checking on the injured stray they picked up from the roadside yesterday. Can't wait to see him. Yeah, hopefully he's, uh... he's doing all right, yeah. yeah. The dog has been taken to the LSPCA clinic in Kanega, the northern suburb of Malawi's capital, Lilongwe. The LSPCA was set up in 2008 with the help of RSPCA International, and it's the country's first domestic animal welfare charity. Vet manager Tino Rizemba is waiting with the dog they rescued. Hi. Morning, guys. How are you guys doing? Oh, little boy. Hi. Give us some good news, Tina. How's he doing? No, he slept well through the night. Gotcha. Um, gave him some pain medication and some antibiotics. Um, having small meals throughout the night. He's eating very well. But the poor lad is still in a bit of a state. You know, getting on the table like this, you can see how skinny he is. Yeah. It's, uh, it's unbelievable. And look how big this tick is on his neck. That absolutely massive one over here as well. Poor boy. The dog is wearing a muzzle just in case he's carrying any disease, such as rabies, which kills around 500 people a year in Malawi. At least he survived the night, hasn't he? Yeah. Be better, be better, better bets than he had out there on his own, I think. Yeah. yeah. A lot better. Yeah. A lot better. Bless him. I'm off out on the road now, so um, I'll leave him in your capable hands. We've named him Medidi after the hotel that we're staying in, which I think makes a pretty cool name, <laughs> isn't it? Right. Have a good day, mate. Good luck. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. See you later. That's all right. Probably got 100 ticks yeah, on him, that, more than that, which is probably the biggest burden I've ever seen of ticks. Mm -hmm. In England, most owners will never see a tick on their dog in its lifetime. Yeah. And, and to be here, you see hundreds, hundreds, on, ticks. hundreds on, on, a, on a single dog is incredible. With the blood-sucking ticks removed, Riaz can examine Medidi's bad leg. There's a lot of fluid around this. In fact, it's all coming, coming out on the fingers as well. So. It doesn't feel like anything's broken, does it? There's nothing swinging. He's not jumping when we're palpating it at all. So my best guess is, is that this is filled with fluid. There's an infection in this ankle. It's probably not something he's used in a while. Um, he's got no muscle on it at all. And the treatment is the same as the one that, that you've got him on already. So antibiotics, fingers crossed, they start to work. If he didn't get brought here, do you know how long would he survive? To be honest with all that's going on with him, yeah. I think I would have just given him maybe another day or two. A day? Yeah. If we'd have gotten a flight three days later, we'd have driven past a dead dog. Exactly. We got there in the nick of time. He's pulled through for now, and I think that's more testament to Medidi's character and his willingness to fight. You can see that he's, he's trying. We'll be catching up with Medidi later. Hopefully, his blood test won't show anything serious. Just like us, many Malawians keep dogs as pets, but they don't have the same resources at their fingertips as we do to take care of them. That said, it doesn't mean they love them any less. Puppies, like Harley here, are very popular there too, but unfortunately, this has led to a growing illegal street trade, which the LSPCA and police continue to fight. When Anthony was in Malawi four years ago, he rescued some sick puppies from roadside cellars. Close the door. Close the door. Same bunny. He's offered us a price that we know that he's, he's that's what he's doing. He's, he's committed an offence straight away, so he's been arrested. And it seems that trade is still very much alive. He's having a briefing with LSPCA officers Cossum, Edson and manager Lisa. 
it's an increasing problem here in the long yeah. way, um, especially with the spread of rabies and parvo and other diseases, because we have no idea what's out there. So apart from the animal welfare issue, we're also trying to stop all sale of puppies on the other side of the road. The team have good intelligence of where it's most prevalent. So Edson and Kossam are going to take you on today, and you're going to uh, see where people are selling at the moment. And it is illegal. It is illegal, yeah. yeah. What sort of price, on average, are they, are they, guy, are they offering these dogs for? Yeah, I think the average is 9,000. The average is 9,000 9, kwacha. It's about nine, which is nine quid. Edson has identified Area 49 as a hotspot where these pups are being sold. Yeah. This area is where most people buy dogs, because that's the area where you find people better off than other areas. Right. Uh, well, there's people always... It, always selling, every day? Or? Every day. Even now, they're selling, as we speak. There's no time to lose. They'll be driving in unmarked cars, so they don't alert the sellers. We don't want it in any way. You put the seller off. Um, it's, it's just starts to rain as well, which isn't great, because the rain will quite often s send the puppy sellers away, but we will... Um, hopefully and have ourselves a, a puppy seller today. Accompanying the team are two undercover coppers. They need them to seize the puppies and make any arrests. Once again, Anthony spotted something. Basically, we've got two puppy sellers up there right now. We're going to have to be really quickly because someone's going to tip them off and they're going to go. So police officers are in our car. We all go together and there. Uh, let's do it. Straight in. Can you put that camera down? Yeah. Hide that out of the way. Yeah. The plan is for Anthony to act as a buyer and catch them in the act. Are they still here? No, they're still here. There they are now. Two puppies. I want to see them. See the puppies? Can I see? And this one? How much? How much? How much? How much? They've been rumbled. It's in. We got them, my man. They got the pups, but it seems the sellers have got away. As soon as we showed them some money, they've come over. The puppies have come to me. We've got a price. They've suspected the police officers. The police officers have got out, and one's run that way, one, one's run that way. But um, we win. We've got them. I'm absolutely over the moon, overjoyed. I was literally shaking with nerves, thinking, what can go wrong? Straight off to the LSPCA now. They're shivering, bless them. We'll go and see Riaz and uh, give them a quick once-over. Job done. Hey guys, what have you got, mate? two puppies. They they haven't been arrested. They've run off, but we got we got the puppies. So let's pop them straight into uh, Comsat One. They're not old enough to leave mum, really. That's a concern. Five weeks or so. Let's get the first one out. Trade on the table, please. We'll do. Oh, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. They're small. So we just need to be a bit cautious. Obviously, we don't yeah, know yeah. their history. It's we don't. Highly likely it's unvaccinated, isn't it? Yeah, I, I, I think we can say that. Let's have a look at your teeth. Oh, God, look how pale he is. OK. So they're probably about six, seven weeks, okay. right? So too, too, too young yeah. to be out. And look at that. So I'm not surprised. The animal's completely anemic. Ticks, fleas crawling all over him. A little bit dehydrated as well. Let's have a little listen. Just notice he's got a little bit of pus on his paw yeah. here. Yeah. He's got a little learned uh, And you can, see, you can see further to that, it's actually quite inflamed. Um, this whole digit, so yeah, there's pus coming out, so this is all infected. Yeah. So he's going to need some treatment for some that. antibiotics. Yeah, I'm glad you picked these up because they're not going to develop properly. Next one. Let's hope the second pup hasn't got anything seriously wrong with him. He's amazing, isn't he? I know he's been stealing mummy's uh, mummy's milk. Hello, chunky. Yeah, and also a bit wobbly. When you yeah. popped him down, yeah. his uh, back legs sort of gave way. Hi. 
He's also got sort of wounds on his ear as well, and it's really thickened. Um, there's pus coming, look, can you see that? Yeah, That's just pus coming yeah. straight out. So these animals need treatment. They shouldn't be being sold at the side of a road. So um, what will be the plan now? Will it be sort of antibiotic treatments and flea treatments? Yeah, so I think we start with the problems we've got. The other thing we need to do is vaccinate them. Yeah. Yeah, and also make sure they're eating. Yeah. He's about as dopey as you are, mate. I might call oh, him Anthony. He's amazing. Hey, Anthony. If my little mate's Anthony, then we're going to have to call this little guy Riaz. Are you happy with that? <laughs> Fair play, mate. Anthony and Riaz, double team. Oh. I think you've saved another couple of puppies, mate. Yeah, I think the team have done a good job there, to be honest. I don't think little Anthony over here is going to complain about being saved. No. I think he's fallen asleep in your arms. Yes. Is that a flea on my arm? I don't mind. I'll leave it. It is. It I'll is. leave it. Yeah. He's too cute to move. Oh, bless him. But there's something that little Anthony won't mind waking up for. Food. Let's get little Anthony and Riaz uh, settled. Here, here, here. What's this? Good boy. Straight in. Oh. That's my boy, Anthony. That's my boy. <laughs> he's, he's going for it. I think it's safe to say that, that they're hungry. They've had a, a busy day being rescued. Four years ago, we got puppies, and then we just got puppies again. Word will spread, and people will realise that there are police officers going around. It is illegal, and, you know, if you're caught, then you could end up in jail or with a, a real hefty fine. Still to come. Look, they've all lined up. They're all waiting. Oh, it looks like they need a vet. It's in at the deep end for Riaz as he faces more four-legged patients than ever before. Every time a dog comes onto the table, another two turn up in the queue. And an injured dog... How does he know that it was stoned? He had to the sore. ..proves too much for Anthony. <laughs> it's another sunny morning in Malawi. You ready for today? Yeah, ready today. And it's a big day for Riaz and Anthony. World Spay Day, to be precise. I've heard there are people turning up there already, so... Yeah, should be sort of in for a big Today's one. event is an open-air pop-up surgery, offering free dog neutering. And manager Lisa is making sure Riaz and Anthony get there. Morning. Hello. How's it going? Let's do it. World Spay Day. Good, yeah. Here we go. Cheers. <laughs> How are you feeling about today, mate? I don't really know what to expect, to it's be honest. It's going to be very different, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I've heard something about a tent. It's not even a theatre, is it? No, it's a big tent. We've put up shade, at least to give some protection from the elements, rain and sun. God. We set up tables and we try and keep it as hygienic as possible. Yeah. This is what it's all about, really. Yeah, it's grassroots it. animal welfare. We're basically taking the veterinary service to them. Yeah. As well as free neutering to help control the growing dog population, the charity will also be giving rabies vaccinations and welfare advice. Like we've been living in a, in, a, in a hotel where we're really sort of sheltered in, in a sense. Coming here, this is a different world. Look, they've all lined up. They're all waiting. Oh, it looks like they need a vet. <laughs> <Love that. laughs> oh, my goodness. What have we got ourselves into, Anthony? With the scarcity of clinics in the area, this is a great chance for these doggy patients to get some medical attention. No wonder it's a popular event. Time to get changed? Yeah, mate. I'll get my scrubs on. Right, mate. See you, mate. Wow. Anthony will be keeping an eye out for any dogs that need medical attention, while Riaz, who's been a vet for two years, gets ready for some field operations. This is different. This is definitely different. A world away from the sterile conditions Riaz is used to working in back home, he'll be one of five vets under the canvas. After scrubbing up, Riaz gets his first anaesthetised patient of the day, courtesy of vet manager Tino. All good, Tino? How long have I got? Um, so plenty of time. Yeah, <laughs> I'll get some just to keep an eye for your anaesthesia for you. The pressure's on. Riaz has just 20 minutes to castrate the dog before the anaesthetic wears off. The money and facilities here simply don't allow for anything more than the basics. Rock and roll. 
So when you're normally doing an operation like this, you have an animal maintained under gas. But here, that's just not a luxury we, we, we have, unfortunately. Here's the first testicle of the tour. Thanks for the warning, Rio. Now, what I need, can I get some cat gut, please? There we go. OK, let's close. A surgery like this only takes 15 minutes start to finish, but, you know, we're probably coming up to that now. This is not going to be the neatest surgery I've ever done, but... Uh, I don't think the dogs mind particularly about that. I'd prefer if it didn't wake up on the table. Yeah, the dog would prefer that too. Rios has one neuter under his belt, with plenty more lined up. Every time a dog comes onto the table, another two turn up in the queue. And before he can start on the next one, his first patient's already mobile. The dog that we've just operated on is literally got up from the anaesthetic and it's just bolted. They take the dog straight from the theatre table to a bit in recovery. But given the humidity, the fact that we've only given them, like, sort of drugs that last 20 minutes, the dog literally was there for a couple of minutes, just found its legs and pegged it. It may be different to back home, but these dog rescuers are doing their best with what they have. And it seems there's a hitch with Riaz's first female patient, too. Tino's actually just checking its reflexes right now, and unfortunately, it's still very much awake. So in the UK, right, and even at Tino's practice at the LSPCA, you get control of the airways, you put a tube down its, into it, basically you control its lungs. And with that, you can give them gas to stay under so they don't wake up. We don't have that here, right? So, first pitch bay, sort of cancelled. But there's no shortage of dogs waiting, so it's another male castrate for Riaz. This is new to me. Flies, just on the kit. I mean, you can't do anything about it. With the assistance of student vet Amos, who's keeping an eye on the anaesthetic situation. There's a fly on the testicle. Oh, you've done that every day. Done. That's two down for Riaz. At the vaccination tent, Anthony has spotted two dogs suffering from the sort of conditions that are sadly all too common in Malawi. They're both quite underweight, and um, one dog in particular. A lot of the dogs here are affected by flies, and the flies are attacking the ears and they get wounds, and this dog is particularly affected, so um, we pulled out of the queue. Tino is examining the dogs, called F and Tony. Do you actually put your food for them? Or you give them leftovers from your team? Leftovers. You give leftovers. You also need to give them a bit more. I mean, those two dogs, they were really, really poor condition. At home, you'd be considering quite serious consequences for the owner, but it's such a difficult situation. It's heartbreaking, really, because you think that these guys, are, a lot of the time, they're struggling to put food on the table for, their, for themselves and their family, you know, and we're telling them to up the feed for the dogs, but if they choose to own a dog, then we've got to give them that advice. Tino is able to offer treatment for little Tony's ears. It's basically apply repellent and it's not applied on all the wounds that are there. Um, so that we just, just give the wound some time to heal, basically. Get rid of those pesky flies, eh? Cause all these wounds. There you go. Meanwhile, Riaz's next operation is proving tricky, so vet Catherine Wood is lending a hand. It's fine, um, but this really is like... Tight. Basically, you've got a centimetre between the ovary and the kidney. You're fine. I'll be all right. You'll be okay. fine. Yeah. That's why we're so going to have issues. It was ridiculously tight. Yeah. Fine. Ridiculous. Spaying a female dog, removing the uterus, can take around 30 to 40 minutes on average. With a bit of help, Rias handled this tricky one in 20. Right, can we get something to clean it? Sorry, I just need to clean her up. The last pitch play we did, we almost had to have three vets just to actually get one of the body parts out. Um, luckily, we've got some very experienced vets who do this all the time. So. All in all, we got there, the dog's recovering as we speak. Uh, it's a bit of a baptism of fire. By the end of the day, the team have seen and treated around 130 dogs. There'd be no veterinary care available to any of these dogs without situations like this. And I just think uh, it's a pleasure for me to be involved in, just for, even just for a day like today. What an amazing day. We've got a lot of dogs neutered. I think we ended up neutering about 70 dogs today, so incredible achievement by all the LSPCA staff.
next day and the rainy season is well and truly here. The team have moved on to a remote community where there isn't a vet for nearly 120 kilometers. The dog population in Malawi is fast growing out of control and rabies kills around 500 people every year. So the main focus today is vaccinating against the disease. It feels like we're in the middle of a monsoon here. We've got 80 odd people and their dogs, some of them not even on leads. Even in the rain, people have turned up and, and they've walked for miles probably to get here. So the least we can do is, is do our bit. Riaz and vet manager Tino are in charge of vaccinations. The animals are turning up here in a bit of a queue. They'll get vaccinated if they look healthy enough. Then they get a marker on their heads, and just so we know that they've, they've been vaccinated. Anthony's doing his bit too, despite the rain. You must look, you must look. I'm constantly have to tell people to, how to handle the dog. It's it is quite frustrating, they've got to be honest with you. We've had to pile all the dogs and the people into this tent. So it's a high stress situation for the dogs, particularly. OK, next stop. Yeah? With the first batch of dogs vaccinated, it's on to some treatment for a common condition caused by flies. Should warn you, it's rather gruesome. So this dog's got maggots coming out of its belly and its legs as well. So flies are just basically laying their eggs under the skin and then they grow into the skin and they just hatch from there. These ones are also quite infected when I was squeezing them, there was quite a bit of pus that was coming out. So this guy was going to do an injection just to kill off any other smaller ones that we may have missed. Thanks to the vital work by the charity, this brave little pup is now on the mend. Okay. Another that Anthony spots is not. She has a worrying leg injury. It's fully lame on one leg and it's from the weight as well. I'm just trying to feel for any breaks or any just basic abnormal movement, possibly a dislocation or anything like that. Does he know what may have caused it? Okay. Was stoned. Was stoned. Mm. So basically, the dog was stoned. People throwing stones at it. So it's highly likely she's got maybe a, a very small fracture there. In terms of what more can be done for her, it's just we want to be more of just pain medication. And then if we see that at some point in time that there is no improvement, she'll most probably just need to be sadly put down. Because I don't think there'll be anybody here with the skills to actually do an uh, amputation. And at the same time, nobody here would actually want to own an amputated dog. So really something that's abnormal to them. So it'll actually just be a more target of this more stoning and the kind of thing like that. How does he know that it was stoned? Because it's actually sore. He actually sore. And there's more bad news. The owner has another at home that's also been stoned. It's worse. Okay. It's worse. I mean, is it worth considering him signing it over on anyway? Because he can't keep them safe, can he? Highly likely that he's just going to get more dogs, because he'll be using it for security. I'm sure they go out and have fun and go hunting with the dogs, so... I don't know, but just... Yeah. Depressing, isn't it? Honestly, there's not much that breaks me, but I've just seen that dog. Um, so I've dealt with some of the worst cases of cruelty in the last nine years at home. Organised cruelty, people killing animals for fun. And I'm, and I'm strong and I deal with it. Um, and I go home and I just, just, just get on with it. But I just think that's oh, just... It's, it's, it's bad. That's a low point for me, that. <laughs> the owners agree to take Anthony and Tino back to his home to see if anything can be done for the other injured dog.
Sadly, the story proves to be true. The dog's just a pup and looks in a very bad way. So is this one walking? Yeah. It's walking. Very slow. Very slow. Yeah. Oh, OK. Can you see that? Just white. These are all ticks. So it's basically sucking all the blood out of him. It's a very, very bad state. Um, very weak. To leave it here in this kind of condition, I expect this one maybe to die, with, to die within the week. It looks as if putting both of these weak and lethargic dogs to sleep is the kindest option. The dog and pup are handed over by the family. It's a sad journey back to the vaccination tent. Where the two suffering dogs are put to sleep. We get into animal welfare to see animals be, be euthanized, but um, that was actually a rescue, really. That was something that I actually feel relieved that it was done because I, I just feel that we've alleviated their suffering. And, and sometimes in animal welfare, that's all you can do. I feel emotionally physically drained just because of what we've dealt with today. It's been a tough day for Anthony and the team, but they've vaccinated around 250 dogs against rabies, which could well save many more lives in the future. It's not all bad. We've, we've treated loads of dogs here today, so we're doing the best we can with what we've got. Coming up... Hey, buddy. He's sitting up. A bit different to how we saw him last time, eh? We catch up with Medidi, the first dog rescued by Anthony and Riaz, and find out the latest on their puppy namesakes. Come to daddy. Hi, big boy. Hello. Hello. And if your home is crying out for a rescue dog, we might just have the one for you. It's Riaz and Anthony's last day in Malawi. But they can't leave without saying goodbye to their namesake pups. Hey, yours is. Riaz, get off and leave it. Get off him. Go on, lad. Get off there, you got to wait. Please, stay there. Give me puppy. Come on, to daddy. Let's get that. Hi, big boy. Hello. Hello. You look better than the other day, don't you? You look more lively and more cheeky. Ten minutes of puppy playtime. Absolutely. Let's go. These six-week-olds were rescued from roadside cellars, and it's too early to say what their future holds. <laughs> I don't think yours has realised he's outside yet. Little Riaz and Anthony will be kept under observation for the next few weeks. What? You my guard dog. Riri. Puppy playtime over, there's one more very important patient to check in on, Medidi, the dog they rescued when they arrived here five days ago. Hey, buddy. <sighs> He's sitting up. A bit different to how we saw him last time, yeah. eh? He still looks a bit depressed, doesn't he? Does, yeah. Maybe he just doesn't like goodbyes. Time for some treats, I think. Oh, good boy. Shy Medidi needs a bit of encouragement to leave his kennel. He's nibbling out How's my this? hands, isn't he? Here he is. I think he prefers being hand fed. I think he likes to be hand fed. He trusts it a bit more, doesn't he? Come on, then. Just so rewarding that we're almost a week after rescuing him, and he's um, he's still alive, essentially, and he's. You know, he's got a good appetite, and I think that that's half the battle sometimes, isn't it? You can see how skinny he is. He's so so the first week, we're always going to see this sort of... Sometimes we actually see them lose a little bit of weight. Yeah. Um, but the important thing is that he's got access to food and his body can get used to it just slowly. The good news is Medidi's blood tests were clear of disease, but his leg injury will take a while to heal. You can see how long this has been going on for as well, because... It's a real chronic situation. Because he's used to walking on three legs. Yeah. When we saw him, he wasn't walking at all. Medidi! Oh. 
we're going to say I'll go and bless him. Do you think he likes his new name <laughs> already? Really? He's responding to it. You know, I'd be really sad if he didn't make it, and I think he's a little fighter. It would be silly to, to say that he's, you know, out of the woods. I think, if I'm being honest, I still think he's 50-50 right now. Yeah. All right, matey. It's, gonna, it's not going to be easy saying goodbye to this son. Best of luck, buddy. Best of luck. You uh, hang on in there, buddy. Coming out to Malawi has just been an absolute eye-opener. There are so many things out here that I've learned. There's so many experiences that I've had. They can only prepare me to, to be a better vet. Invaluable, an invaluable life lesson for me being out here. This is definitely different. Well, I'll never ever forget this week. This time has been much tougher emotionally for me. Really, really tough. It's been nice to have Riaz. Yeah, good job, good job. Everything that we've sort of got involved in, I think we've made a real positive influence. We win. We really have got stuck in. I don't think we could have done any more in the time that we've had. <laughs> yeah, good job, buddy. Good job. <laughs> and now they're back on home soil, Anthony and Riaz are here to give me the latest on Malawi. Well, welcome back to England. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gritting your teeth through the wind yeah. and the rain. Is <laughs> that so your first trip then, Riaz? To it? Malawi? Yeah. Yeah, and wow, was it an eye opener. Uh, they do some incredible work out there. Hundreds of dogs got vaccinated. Genuine honour for us to be involved. The fact that they're over there every day vaccinating against rabies, you know, something as serious as rabies, they're, you know, they're essentially saving human lives as well. So, what is the latest on the dogs that you rescued? Medidi um, and Riaz. Puppy Riaz particularly is doing, they were both doing fantastically well. We had a look at where Riaz has gone off to and he's gone off to a beautiful home. I'll actually just show you if you don't mind. So Riaz, he's obviously grown somewhat and uh, he just looks like a really yeah, well-rounded, yeah, yeah well-socialised puppy that's doing really, really well. And what about the first dog that you found on the way from the airport? Yeah, it was the same as four years ago, really. We just, things happened straight away and, and um, I sort of looked out the window and spotted Poor Madidi. He was just sat beside the road, collapsed uh, in a real emaciated state, a real poorly state. It's, I'm just honestly overjoyed at the, the video we got to see a couple of days ago of the, the latest update. He's still slim, but he's not just a bag of bones. No. And his whole body language, the way he's holding his mouth, everything is just, he's, he's happy now. It's incredible. The, the turnaround's incredible, isn't it? It's a different dog. Well, that dog would have died probably, right? I think yeah. if we wouldn't have spotted him, I think, a couple of days. You know, if we were on a different plane coming over, we'd have missed him probably. Yeah. Unfortunately, Anthony, uh, the puppy Anthony, didn't make it. He um, contracted Parvo shortly after we left Malawi and, and passed away. So there's a, still an ongoing connection between the RSPCA and the LSPCA? Yeah, I mean, even though that we, we've come, obviously we're home now, um, that connection and that work will still continue. Over the, the years to come, many, many thousands of animals will be, will be helped. Good work, gents. As you've seen in the programme, many rescue dogs don't have the best start in life, but that doesn't mean that they can't make incredible pets. The RSPCA care for thousands of them, and there's often lots of work that needs to be done to get them ready for rehoming. And here's just one of the wonderful dogs they've been looking after. This is Jerry. He's a five and a half year old German Shepherd cross boxer. Jerry has been with us for around seven months now and came in due to him being left in the garden, unsocialised and unattended. Hey, Jerry. Hi, matey. Oh, good boy. Because Jerry's in kennels and is stressed, we found that he does occasionally get tummy upsets. So he is on a special diet. <laughs> He loves splashing in the pool with a good belly rub. And he absolutely loves his food and treats. I'm down. Good boys. Jerry has come on in leaps and bounds since being in with us, and it would be absolutely fantastic if he could find his forever home. Jerry would suit a home where he is the only pet with an active lifestyle and adults only. Jerry is an absolutely fantastic dog with bags of potential and he makes somebody a wonderful companion. So, if you're looking for a four-legged best friend in your life, 
remember to make your local rescue centre your first stop, where you'll find plenty of deserving candidates desperate to brighten up your home. Next time on The Dog Rescuers. Heroic rescues. Police on the dog! Heartbreaking tales. It is an emotional thing. She's been an absolutely fantastic companion. And incredible transformations. She needs, she needs something for her skin and her eyes, because they're all gunky, aren't they? You're loving that, aren't you? Is that a good game? I do actually call them my little gremlins. Woof! Nice chance for them to start being proper dogs out on a walk. But what's most amazing of all is the number of deserving dogs that, thanks to dog rescuers like you, have now found loving new homes. Go on, then. They're having an absolutely great life. It's what they deserve. Who is it? A poor... We adopted Chino, but Chino's adopted us. We feel really blessed. She's going to be loved for the rest yeah. of her days. These wonderful little dogs who've been mistreated and looked after, but they give you so much back. Well worth our anime, eh? Thanks for watching and bye for now, but don't forget to tune in later in the year for more of The Dog Rescuers.